uh, lady down the front there, and then we'll get a who on this um, side. Hello. I don't really mind who answers this, but um, I just wanted to know, did everyone end up on the team they wanted to be on? Mm. Or did they get the script to go, uh, um, <laughs> Team Iron Man, boo. I did kind of want to be on Team Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said it. He said it, I knew he'd say it. <laughs> There's a similar question actually come in from, uh, we're streaming online and we've had a question come in on social media from Phoebe who wants to know, if you could switch powers with another Avenger, uh, which one would it be? Um, Oof, that's a good one. Go on. I, I, I mean, switching powers, I take vision, not switching makeup. <laughs> I don't, uh, it's a real nightmare, but, but the ability alone, yeah, you can't, you can't beat vision. He has an infinity star in his head. I don't know, I don't know how you top that. Paul, would I you want to swap with anyone or just stay who you are? <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay where I am. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, it might be nice to be Iron Man now and again, <laughs> you know. But I'm pretty good where I am. Thank you. Jeremy. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm sure I don't give you a hard time. Uh, I, I, oh, I think Spi I, I like Spi I've always I grew up watching Spider-Man as a kid. Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always loved Spider-Man as a kid. <laughs> So I'll, 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 I'll do this on you. Get out of here. Great. <laughs> Stuck. Um, okay, next question. Gentleman's got a microphone over there. Get, get out of here. <laughs> Go on. Uh, Ask your question. This, this question is for Robert. So obviously in the other Avengers films, you're kind of cuddly and nice to everyone. Yeah. But uh, in this one, you're kind of not. Where are you? <laughs> Hi, honey. Yeah. Um, so, what do you prefer, being like horrible to Steve or not? <laughs> that acting was obviously. I mean, it really just depends on you know what's the what's the narrative of the movie. As you can see, I'm a uh, I'm a worker amongst workers, and I like I like getting in where I fit in. In any movie where I can spend weekends with Renner, he's Lord of the Underworld. This is Pluto back here. <laughs> He's going to get you home in one piece, but you're actually finally going to have a good time. <laughs> uh, <next question. laughs> We've got a microphone here as well. Go for it. Uh, this is for Kevin. Um, when are we going to get our Falcon Bucky road trip movie? Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Well, we're doing like, we're shooting a uh, Weekend at Bernie's spinoff. Yeah. With the three of Jeremy's us. Who's the, the dead, dead guy? guy. Jeremy. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be Bernie. <laughs> Weekend at Bucky's. <laughs> Weekend at Bucky's. That's what we're doing. Weekend at Bucky's. Kevin, I want to ask you about the um, the kind of the additional characters that are brought into this. You know, there's, we, we see new characters kind of coming in to join the teams. How do you know when, in the process of putting that idea together and who was coming in and where they were going to be, how did you work that out? Is it kind of like a chessboard? Is it, you know, no, the, well, the chessboard on this movie was who, who sided with who, to your earlier question. Uh, sort of, and there were a lot of uh, characters that went back and forth for a while before we landed on, on, the, on the makeup of the team. Um, but in terms of the addition of, of uh, Tom Holland as Spider-Man and Chadwick Boseman, who who couldn't be here today, but who is unbelievably awesome oh, as, as yep. Black Panther. Um, it came from the story. We didn't sit down and go, okay, we want to introduce these characters because we want to make more movies and how do we wedge them in. It, it, it was, we are telling Civil War, we have Cap's side, we have Tony's side, um, and we wanted to bring in somebody who wasn't aligned with either side. And Black Panther in the comics is great because he doesn't really give a shit about either of the other, of the other sides. He has his own agenda. Um, and it was, I don't know, a, th a quarter of the way through the development process where we thought this would be the time to bring in Panther. Go ahead. Next question, please. Gentleman over there, please, we can get a mic. And is there anyone on this side as well? Put your hand up. We'll get... And the gentleman there, if we can get a mic to him for the <clears> next question, please. Hi, I have a question for uh, Kevin, uh, Joe, and Anthony. Uh, what are Nick Fury and Maria Hill doing during the events of Civil War? <laughs> uh, you'll find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is story around where they are, but it's story that's coming down the road. <laughs> Future movies. <laughs> so unfair. Okay. Um, there you go. You got a microphone. Go for it. Uh, yeah. This question for Kevin. I was just wondering how early um, in the whole MCU process did Civil War come about? Was it 
you know, pre-phase one? Was it after Winter Soldier? When was it actually a reality for you? Well, it was before, yeah, before the MCU even existed in the early days of, I think we were even uh, just beginning to dream about maybe becoming our studio and getting financing was about a little over 10 years ago, which is when Civil War was published. And, uh, and it was an amazing comic series, and I remember um, uh, reading it you know, every month when, when it came out and thinking, it would probably be impossible, but wouldn't it be cool someday to do this? Um, and it wasn't until about two years ago, two and a half years ago, that we thought, now is the time. We've assembled enough players that we could do it now. Can I ask a question from me? How do you decide who Stan's going to be? Who's Stan Lee? What's how do, Stanley how do you, in each film, who decides where he's going to pop up? And <clears throat> it varies. Sometimes the idea comes about uh, very early and is incorporated in, into the script. And sometimes, based on his schedule or where, he's, where he uh, is willing to travel, it comes about sort of uh, uh, later in the process. On Guardians of the Galaxy, it was, uh, it was shot later. And I think this one was shot during production, but I don't remember when the idea came up for this one. It was in the draft, I think. It was in the draft, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, usually we comb through uh, when the script is done and try to find a spot for Stan. Yeah. Go ahead. Next question. There's a lady at the back in a blue shirt. If we can get you a microphone and anyone else on this side, raise your hand if you have a question. I'll get a mic. You've had one. You can, if there's time, you can have another one, but the gentleman behind with the glasses, thanks. Hi. Um, <laughs> this is a question. Sorry, hello. Uh, it's a question for Chris Evans. So this, this time around, like Marvel's, the Marvel Universe is really like, stepped up so like what were your initial thoughts when you first read the script for civil war uh it was it was exciting you know i mean a lot of it rested on downey's shoulders whether or not that he would be willing to to do this you know and and you know right away that when you bring downey into the equation the movie is gonna you know it's, it's gonna have a certain level of awareness and it's gonna have a certain level of charisma he just he you know that, that's what he comes with and it was it was it was exciting it was exciting to think that you could kind of you, you knew what it meant as a jump off. You knew what that meant, because uh, obviously the Civil War and the comic books incorporate so many characters. And at the end of the movie, you know, Marvel has this great history of never leaving you completely satisfied. You kind of anticipate the, the, the next chapter, and this would obviously leave the entire MCU in a little bit of disarray, which is exciting, because that's only going to be more rich for the next Avengers film. So for me, I was, I was thrilled. I mean. Shit, I'll take all the help I can get. <laughs> uh, gentleman there, question? Hi, this is a question for Chris again. Um, <clears throat> Where are you? There you are. Hey. Um, yeah, following the film last week, a lot of my friends who saw it at the same time, uh, one of the things they were talking about was that scene where you pulled down a helicopter. And oh, then right, yeah. The shape of your arms, in particular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Just, yeah uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of bicep How porn, much yeah. CG's involved, and was it more than the giant? How movie? what? What was it? <laughs> <laughs> How hard is it to look like that? I missed it again. How hard is it to look like How that? Much oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't think it was. Kevin, did you? No. That's all. Those are real? I think, it was, I think it was me. Um, but it, it's, you know, you, you do those things. Luckily, between scheduling and the Russo, everyone, you try and get those scenes as early on in, in filming as possible because you. You gradually shed weight as you're filming. You're wearing that suit every day, and you just. I was helping him work on his shoulder about six weeks after that. I, I so, really, uh, genuinely did mess up something in my arm. We don't arm care. We love that shot. Doing it, you know, like it's a very, <laughs> very unnatural shot. position to be in. And you're like, look, you're, you're trying to flex. You're trying to look good. I'm not like, you know, it's not. An, it's not a utilitarian shot. You're. It's really just trying to look good. Yeah, yeah come on in. Uh, I was just. Go on, Paul. Go. On. What do you want? I was what? gonna say. Um, you really were holding back a helicopter, too. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it was on a rig, clearly, but, but the first take we did, oh. you know, the, the rig, <laughs> it, it didn't go far enough, and so you're kind of just, you, you look silly almost, and you say, guys, you gotta, can we get it so it actually extends to the point where you really are trying to hold something, and they did, and, <laughs> and you really do, all of a sudden you are trying to hold something, it may not be a helicopter, but regardless, it, it, it did something, and that's true, there were, there were many days that I would come into Downey's, uh, trailer and he has all these amazing contraptions. He's like, well, I was gonna say another comic book character. We don't wanna bring DC into this though. <laughs> but he has all these amazing toys and, uh, and, and he really had all these little, you know, stickers and weird things and like. Electromedicine. Whatever it is. And it, it actually was great. It's a mess again though, I will say. I'll mention this. I remember the day we shot that scene 
there was a miscommunication with the costume department and Chris came to set to start the scene in a jacket. And Joe and I were like, no, no. <laughs> Everyone was like, no, no, no. <laughs> it would have been a different scene Yeah. in a jacket. You look on set physio, Mr. Downer Jr. like that. It's kind yep. of a side project. Yeah, that's nice of you, Robert. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Rubbing down Chris, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> A little uh, digital okay. stimulation, never hey, hurt anybody. We're tight. That's how much we really, really all love each other. Get along. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen there uh, with the beard for a question and then at the back. I have a question. Is there an intermission in this press conference? <laughs> <laughs> do, you need to, do you want to go? No, no, I'm fine. Do you want to go? Do you want to leave? You've answered a lot. Go, sir. A uh, question for all of us? <laughs> Hey, man. Yeah, um, if superheroes were a reality in 2016, what do you think the government's reaction to them would be? Team Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> it would. There would have to be some sort of responsibility. You'd have to answer to somebody. That you, you couldn't just let these group of vigilantes answer to themselves, right? I mean, that, that's, that's the sad truth. I mean, the truth is, if, this, if there really were Avengers, I would be Team Iron Man. I would. I mean, who would? God, you're here. I was really... I'm having a hard time grasping that concept. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, and then last question to the gentleman just behind there. Yeah. yeah, you've got the mic. Yeah, the next question is for Robert and also for uh, Daniel with his German view. Um, <laughs> I would be interested, who is at the movie set? The big boss who has got the biggest trailer and why? Well, it wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Mackie's. <clears throat> that would be correct. Anthony? <laughs> What? You're the biggest trailer? Uh, it's, it, it's, well, I have a lot of stuff, <laughs> you know? So I just, you know, it, it's really nice. It's really, you know, I gotta, you know. You got he has thigh, like five of them. You got a thousand quads. What? You gotta fit the thousand quads. I gotta quads fit them thighs and quads somewhere, <laughs> man. You know? But Roll he it. has like five. Five of them. Yeah, Ro Robert one. actually has the smallest trailer. He just has another four trailers. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he has this beautiful Airstream trailer, and yeah. then there's, there's four. Just actually, the state of Georgia wanted to give it its own zip code. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a kitty choo-choo train, and it just goes around in a circle. <laughs> By the way, and what's so about you? Got you also got a trailer or no? No trailer. I didn't get one, no. But we're maybe. He got a chair. You got okay. a chair. <laughs> <laughs> But it was yeah, you know, coming, too. coming from Germany, I remember that the first day, the first scene I had with, with Robert, after five minutes, he asked me if I had allergies. I didn't understand the question. Uh, and when I had lunch and was eating my burrito in my humble little trailer, somebody knocked at my door and said, um, and he was sitting in a golf caddy, he said, like, you're cordially invited to Robert Downey's village. <laughs> I said, wow. <laughs> so I left my burrito. <laughs> and then, <laughs> And then in the far distance, I saw that huge <laughs> space with, yeah, four or five, four or five. trailers, you know. Uh, Thanks, Lawn, Kevin. palm trees. <laughs> you know, I had a three-course meal. Right. Did you get a massage? And then I was quite sad when he left because I was only invited <laughs> twice. <to Yeah>. <laughs> That's everybody's goal every day is at lunch to see who's going to get invited <laughs> to the village. And you get so jealous. Like the day he was invited, I see him go I'm by a, my I'm trail. I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm the, I'm the Graydon Carter of the MCU. Oh. <laughs> Robert introduced me to quinoa. <laughs> I was like, what is this beautiful grain? Oh, like, what are these quinoa? little marbles I'm putting in my mouth? Yeah. It's like, quinoa that's quinoa. Now, <laughs> now my time where do I buy this? We had a good one. I, I, I wanted to have Sebastian over sooner, but he sent me this video of him just ripping out <laughs> bicep curls with a decapitated Iron Man uh, skull in the thing. And I was like, this guy's a method. <laughs> That's now, find out what his allergies are. <laughs> uh, and it's time for an intermission, I'm afraid. Um, thank you very much indeed for your time and your questions. And a huge round of applause for our wonderful fashion. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!